chest up, shoulders back. Welcome to Revival Fitness, everybody. Your home for gains and brains. And today is the long-awaited reveal of how I design and program my lower days on my current split. We'll go over the upper days in an upcoming video, but today we're going to focus on lower body and some of the back to an extent as well. So this is going to primarily apply for guys who run a four day split. Now I know a lot of you are gonna have variants here. You might do three day full body. You might do six day push pull legs, whatever the case is. I think for most people, four day a week splits are optimal. I think they're the best in terms of volume in a single session, making the most of your gym time. You can get a good amount of exercises in but not spend six, seven days a week in the gym. I think four days, is really the best for most people. So if you're not doing that now, I would suggest you give it a try. In the pinned comment, I will link my pros and cons of four day splits, but that's what I've been doing for the past year plus, almost two years, and I've been getting good results from it. And as you guys know, my primary goal is more bodybuilding focus, more aesthetics, hypertrophy, even though I hate that word. But if you do wanna get bigger muscles, you still have to get stronger and vice versa. Size and strength, guys, unless you're on a ton of sauce, they're very heavily linked. So you can't just come in and do nothing but, oh, I only want to get bigger muscles but not get stronger. Those are pretty much inseparable. But without further ado, let's hop into the beginning of the routine. Now, I want to make this note, guys. We're going to start here with some mobility work. And I'm guilty of this myself. I often give mobility work a lot of lip service, but then I don't actually put it in practice. So you're going to see some clips here of me. This is before the workout. I'm just going to be going through some mobility drills, some dynamic stretches, things of that nature. Again, you don't have to become the old man who foam rolls for an hour before the workout to do this, okay? But especially if you sit a lot during the day, even if you're standing during the day. When you're doing a lower body day, guys, you're going to see here squats, deadlifts, that type of stuff, heavy compound exercises you really want to loosen up the muscles involved. I find to myself that my hips get very tight during the day, my low back, but all you need guys is five to 10 minutes of dynamic stretching, dynamic meaning moving before the workout. It's not gonna necessarily prevent injuries better. You're not gonna hit massive PRs just because you stretched, okay? But it can loosen your body up more, get your muscles more warm, enhance the range of motion a little bit, all of that good stuff. And we're gonna be joined in just a couple of these clips here with my little lady friend. She is uh, far more flexible than I am. You're not gonna see too much of her in this video because you guys need to focus. But without further ado, let's get into the first exercise of this day. So the first thing I do, and a lot of programs do the same thing, is gonna be the more strength-focused movement. Now this can be squats, deadlifts, some people will do good mornings. Generally speaking, it's going to be something in like the one to five, maybe one to six rep range to focus on strength. So for instance, me, I am running a 5-3-1 variant. I just kind of spice it up a little bit, but the main progression scheme is the same, right? The first week of the wave, you do sets of five plus. The second week, sets of three plus. Then the third week, you go for one rep or more. Now, I have been considering myself trying out conjugate. Essentially, what that means is max effort two times a week for an upper and lower day and then they do what they call dynamic effort or speed work. Now, I have no experience with that myself. I've been running 5-3-1 for a while now, maybe switching things up just to see how it goes. I'm a bit skeptical of the speed work with bands and chains. I don't know how necessary that is, especially if you're not competing in powerlifting. Uh, I might try it out, but we'll see. But for the moment, I'm gonna stick with the 5-3-1 template. Regardless though, the first lift in your day I think should be your strength focused lift. So lower reps, you should not be failing these either. That's a big thing. If you're going to go for strength, especially maximum strength, of course you might fail every now and then, but you don't want to be failing all the time if strength is a primary goal of yours. If you fail all the time, especially on compound lifts, you're going to ingrain into your body that you fail all the time. So generally speaking, you want to stop these probably one rep short of failure, kind of that bleeding edge, whatever you have at your disposal. If you have more access to bars, the better, but I know most of you in general commercial gyms don't. So you could do front squats for a wave, back squats for a wave, sumo conventional, right? So there's always ways to rotate exercises to avoid getting overuse injuries. And especially if you're like me and your low back tends to flare up, don't be afraid to rotate because you can bury yourself quickly 
with a lot of axial loading. And note here as well, if you don't care about low reps at all, you don't really have to do them. You could do these in the six to eight range, even the eight to 12. It's not mandatory to do low reps, but I think if you wanna keep your kind of max out strength relatively sustainable, I think it's good to do just at least one exercise at the beginning for lower reps. So that is the primary lift. And now we're gonna move into the assistance work. So if you guys aren't familiar, assistance work is essentially exercises that mirror the primary movement, but they're not exactly a duplicate. They're gonna be easier to recover from, generally for higher reps. So we started with three sets of, say three sets of three, three sets of five, something like that. For the assistance work, we're gonna go into three or four sets of generally eight to 12. I like 10 reps myself. Generally for me, if I can get up to 12 reps consistently across the sets, it's time to up the weight. So on a lower body day, for example, some exercises we can throw in are gonna be simple variations of the classic power lifts, right? So I've showed you guys before, you can throw in Smith machine squats to get deeper. You can do hack squats or leg press, something on another machine. You can do a safety squat bar squats. You can do front squats for volume as well. I've done that in the past too. You can throw in a trap bar to do Romanian deadlifts. You can do normal Romanian deadlifts. You can use dumbbells. So you have options at your disposal, but regardless, you wanna have your second exercise, at least in my opinion, it should mirror your primary lift or your other primary lifts, kind of your main strength lifts. Mirror it pretty closely. Again, not identical because especially for guys in the more intermediate or advanced stage, heavy squats for volume, become impractical. Heavy deadlifts for volume become impractical. I know there's a lot of people, especially on the old school side of fitness, who are like, oh, you only need to do five exercises your whole life. Tell me how that works out for you. Because for me, that's not working anymore. So don't be afraid to expand your horizons. And if you do get fatigued on these exercises too, the second exercise, you can always keep the sets the same. I've talked about this before, guys, as well. I like to increase my sets across the week. So say we do a three week block, I'll start with three sets, with my assistance or accessory lift, go up to four sets. And then if it's really light, maybe five sets. If it's kind of fatiguing, I'll stick up to four and then try to increase the reps. If it's really fatiguing, like these trap bar deadlifts get pretty fatiguing for my back, keep it at three sets, but focus on increasing reps. So that's how I program my first kind of assistance exercise in the routine. And then we're going to really focus on volume going forward with the accessory exercises. And this is where the magic happens in terms of muscle growth. Volume, assuming you're also doing progressive overload, of course, is where muscle is built. And this is where you can throw in things that have relatively low fatigue, but really hit your target muscles. This is why you need to drop the whole minimalism philosophy. Again, if you're a total beginner, you can do a lot with only five exercises. Once you get more experience though, only five, I think you're asking for trouble. And the same with the accessory exercises too, guys. We're gonna stick with about three to five sets. You might wanna increase those sets across the weeks. Eight to 12 reps, about 10 reps. Really guys, the programming is not that complicated. I know you see these programs online, all these hustler sell, and you gotta, oh, change the rep range every single week and throw in all these new exercises. I am all for rotating in exercises, guys, especially if one of them is giving you pain but you don't have to do all of this crazy stuff like one week, go on the BOSU ball, then the next do this and do that. You need to focus on an exercise for a continued period of time to really see growth from it, especially strength growth. Probably my favorite accessory exercise is the dumbbell Bulgarian split squat. Now this lift has exploded in popularity recently, guys, and for good reason, it's just effective. There's no other way to say it. It gets the unilateral component, it can fix and prevent potential imbalances, you work a lot on your core in that one-legged position, and you get to work on grip strength at the same time. There is no reason not to like this exercise, guys. It does suck. I'm not gonna lie to you, it really does suck, but it's totally worth doing. So for these dumbbell split squats, for example, I threw these in, I started, I think, a month and a half ago. I was doing 45 pounds in each hand for sets of 10. I'm now up to 65 in each hand for sets of 12. And surprise, surprise, my legs have gotten bigger since that point. You can also use this slot to throw in things like the leg press, maybe the hack squat, another machine that allows you to move a lot of weight. Whatever you do though, make sure to just keep increasing the weight, keep your form consistent and don't cheat. So now we've taken care of the quads for the most part. Now we can throw something in for the back. So rows are pretty much unbeatable here as well. 
Now, I know it is a lower day. Some of you might be like, why are you doing back on a lower day? That's an upper body muscle. Guys, if you are working your back effectively, one, your legs are gonna be used to an extent for a lot of exercises, and two, lower body also really translates to pull, right? Push, pull, upper, lower, they're kind of synonymous in a way. So don't get too caught up in the terminology. But if you wanna focus on your squat and your deadlift, rows are going to carry over to both of those, especially the deadlift, right? And there are tons of variations for rows you can do. You can do pen lay rows, you can do bent over rows, with barbells or dumbbells. You can do one-arm dumbbell rows. You can do meadows rows. You can do seal rows like I'm doing here, which are going to include less stress on the low back if that's something you need to incorporate too. Seal rows also make it essentially impossible to cheat. So if you're somebody who tends to really jerk your hips a lot when rowing and kind of cheating those reps, throw in some seal rows or maybe some chest supported rows on a machine to really focus on just contracting the back and the biceps and not using the legs and hips for any assistance. And then once again, we're just gonna do sets of three to five, eight to 12 reps. If I can do 12 or more, I up the weight, rinse and repeat. It's really that simple, guys. Don't overthink this. So we've covered the back. Now we can throw in something for the hamstrings directly, perhaps. Hamstring curls here, bilateral or unilateral. You can do the prone leg curl, the standing leg curl. Whatever you have at your disposal that you feel in your target muscle that doesn't fatigue you much, throw it in and use it, right? You can even try the split RDL that I had in my home gym. You can watch a full tutorial on how to do that up in the top corner. You could also throw in more direct work for your lats, right? Especially if you're aesthetics focused, big lats really complete a physique. So this is when you can throw in pull-ups, chin-ups, lat pull-downs, one arm or with both arms. I right now am doing pull-ups and chin-ups on my upper body day actually, not the lower day. We'll go into that more in the next video. But regardless, if you wanna throw these in anywhere, Pull-ups and chin-ups are excellent because they don't have a whole lot of full body fatigue. There's like no axial loading, and they also work your grip and your lats and also your mid-traps to an extent very, very well. So pull-ups and chin-ups, guys, I would assume if you're watching this channel, you probably do them now. If you're overweight right now and you can't do pull-ups or chin-ups, use an assisted machine, try inverted rows, do your normal barbell and dumbbell rows as you're losing weight to get to the point where you can do pull-ups and chin-ups, but I think they are very hard to replace especially for aesthetics and even for strength in a general program. You can also throw in things like reverse hypers if you have access to that machine, maybe a glute ham raise, the normal hyper extension with some weight added to it, whatever you wanna do. But if you need to focus on the glutes, do that. Focus on the hamstrings, throw in a hamstring curl. If you wanna do more ab work, you can throw in some ab accessories too. Again, I don't know your individual circumstances. I'm not your exact coach, right? But you need to know this for yourself. And if you're really unsure of this, well, you should probably hire a trainer or a coach to help you figure that out because I can't see you. So up to this point, we've done five total exercises. We've done the primary strength lift, the main assistance movement that kind of replicates that or is the opposite of it, a squat or a deadlift. And then we're going to do the three main accessory movements to really hone in on your weak points, get some extra mass in the areas you need it. It's going to be up to your individual circumstances. So we're at five exercises now, and then we're going to finish up with two more. I call these essentially the no-brainer hypertrophy exercises, the higher rep stuff that every guy is already going to be doing, okay? So this is whenever the athlete next comes in, right? We can do our face pulls and our curls, and you can do a million curl variations, whatever you want to do, right? But at the end of the workout, guys, usually 12 to 15 rep range, this is where you can really just have fun, right? Do your curls. They can be incline or standing, cables, it doesn't matter. Just take something and do this. Now with these, I usually only do about three sets. I keep it to three sets of about 12 to 15. I also do curls on my off days too, guys, so that's why I don't have the volume too high. I curl usually five to six days a week in some capacity because I'm a good bro. So if you need to increase or decrease the volume based on your own circumstances or injuries or pains, again, do that. I'm not stopping you. And then what you want to finish up with as well, of course, is going to be the often neglected but much more popular nowadays, rear delts. So as we know, face pulls are a very popular option here. You can do the pec deck, reverse it, right? You can do like a Y raise, a YT raise on a bench to kind of get the rhomboids as well. Whatever you want to do, guys, just something that's in the 12 to 15 or even maybe up to 20 rep range. Really get the rear delts to prevent injury. Keep your front delts safer, make your back look beefier, enhance the V taper keep your shoulders safe, all of that good stuff. But that really is the entire workout, guys. So we're gonna lay it all out here. Seven total exercises. 
Generally speaking, most things are going to be done in the 8 to 12 rep range. At the end, a little bit higher in the rep range. At the beginning, a little bit lower. But otherwise, guys, the onus is on you. You have to do the work yourself. You have to go in the lab and experiment. Try exercises, rotate in new ones. Do certain exercises you like until you really plateau. Throw in something else. If you get some overuse pain or fatigue, swap something out. Use a different bar. Use a machine. Whatever the case might be. But that's really it, guys. This is the basic template. Tell me if you enjoyed it. Tell me what you want to see next down below. Like, comment, subscribe, and I will catch you next time.